Hello friends and fellow gamers, it's MKXJump here, and if you've clicked this video, you're either new to Angel Legion, or you're curious about the content I make here and want to know what this game is. Well, I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide to Angel Legion to hopefully cover the basics for you so that you aren't going in blind, kind of like I was when I started playing. So hopefully this should give you a little bit of insight into how the game works. Now one thing I want to mention before we get started is that Service 16 is available on Android. It just came out today, so if you guys want a great way to keep up to date with other players it is get your hands on this server go in hop in climb in with other players that are starting right now and hopefully if you can join in the first week of the server being up you can keep up with other players because the thing with these idle games is especially if you're free to play it's hard to keep up with other players of course there's lots of pve modes and other things where you don't have to worry about what other people are doing but when you join guilds and want to compete in the arena it's often a good thing to try and join at the same time as other people so that you can compare your progress with your friends and the other people you meet playing this game so guys if you want to start a new account on Android, now is the time to do it. And to get some free resources, you can find a link down below in the description, and there'll also be a code there too, which you can enter in to get your hands on some early resources to help level up your heroes. Anyway guys, let's go check out my guide for Angel Legion. So the first thing you're probably wondering is, do I need to spend money on this game? Well, you can do if you want to speed up your progress, but it's not necessary to unlock all the content in the game. Everything in the game is available free to play. It will just take time to generate resources because it is an idle game. So if you want to speed up your progress, you will have to spend money. But if you want to go at a steady progress, like a lot of free to play players, you won't need to spend anything at all. And actually, I'm going to break down the different things that are worth buying if you wanted to consider spending a little later on in this video. So make sure you stay tuned if spending money on this game was something you had in mind. But to show you guys what you can do as a free-to-play player, let me show you what's available in the game. So I've just completed chapter 2, so I'm going to travel through to the next chapter, which is chapter 3. So the portal is open, we can go to our next destination now. So let's go. And every time you enter into a new chapter, you'll first off have this lovely little cutscene animation, and then you'll enter into a new map where loads of different resources are available for you to go and seek and discover. So if you look around the map, you'll see there are loads of different ships available for us to fly to. There are warlords to fight. There are different resources available in all of these things. So as a free-to-play player, it's very easy to get your hands on these resources just by finding and defeating these opponents. As well, as you complete different things in this sector, you'll get your hands on different chests which give rewards. So this gives diamonds and a chest that can be opened up. This also gives a chest and more diamonds. If you get to 120 of these points, which are really easy to accumulate by the way, you'll get a three-tier chest and more diamonds. And these ones at the top are where it gets really good. So 160 of these points will get two advanced recruitment devices which are used to summon new heroes and also more gems. And finally, if you get to 180, you'll get 500 titanium. Now, titanium is used to get your cabin upgraded. So let me show you what the cabin is. It is a series of different areas in the game that do different things to help improve your heroes. So the production cabin can produce different items and it can fuse gear and also recycle gear. So this is about equipment for your heroes. The biological cabin is used to produce genes. You can breed to unlock more genes, which can be used to help upgrade your heroes. And you can transform or get rid of heroes. You can advance them into an upgraded SS form if they're S tier, but let's not worry about that now. This is just a beginner's guide. And then there's the gene pool, which allows you to exchange war spirit to get your hands on different heroes in the game. So if you were after a specific hero you can purchase them here so it's quite easy and accessible to get this so there are different areas in the game available there's also convert and recycle but we haven't unlocked them yet because we are just a beginner so we don't need to worry about that just yet as someone who's starting the game also there are currencies in the game they're important there is the star coupon and also force which is used to level up your heroes there are the triangle crystals which are used to upgrade their skills and additionally there are alloys which are used to upgrade armor and equipment so these are things you'll have to accumulate over time to boost up your heroes and their equipment so it's something you want to rack up and use on the heroes you like and get them higher leveled as well down here if you need to get more of these resources you have these collectors and these collectors are able to the first one will get you diamonds the second will get you tri crystals and the third will get you alloys as you can see depicted here the final area is the storage cabin where all of these go into and then you can claim them 
every eight hours. So make sure you're logging in and grabbing your resources. Now, everything can be upgraded to a level equal to the Master Cabin. So if I upgrade the Master Cabin to level two, for example, I can now upgrade my production lab to level two. I can upgrade my biological cabin to level two and the same for my storage cabin and my collectors. And as you upgrade these different areas, they give you better benefits. The combat support, which is locked at the moment because this is a brand new server, will give you different available rewards depending on how high your master cabin is. And if you remember, guys, I had to use titanium, which is this material here, to upgrade this. So if you choose to spend, you can increase the amount of titanium you get, but you don't have to spend because as I outlined earlier, the progress at the top reward gives you 500 titanium. So as long as you keep playing through the adventure mode, you should be able to accumulate titanium, which you can then use to upgrade your master cabin, which in turn will give you better rewards along the way. For example, one feature I absolutely love is the master cabin, the higher you get it, you can see you can explore more missions. See so up to two explore missions and then up to two explore chances. Now they're two different things, but the explore chances are what I really like because explore chances are awesome. So let me show you what happens in adventure. If I press the explore button, I can't do it right now, but a beacon will flash around my ship and different areas will pop up on the map, which can give you amazing resources. So the higher your master cabin is, the more times you can do that every two days, which is a great way to accumulate different resources in the game to upgrade your stuff. So you might be thinking, okay, MK, what's all this resources got to do with anything? Well, heroes, as you get resources, can be leveled up. So let's look at Valkyrie here. So I spend my gold and my force to level her up. And you can see now I have reached into where I'm going to be 10 levels higher. I can now upgrade a skill and that will cost an amount of triangle crystals. Now, in my case, it's 150 triangle crystals to upgrade her to level 50. So eventually I'll upgrade her. And we're now capped. We can only get to level 60 because she's only a copper star hero. If we wanted to get her level cap higher, we would need more copies. So to awaken her, we need another copy of Valkyrie. So that's what you need to do to enhance heroes. You need to get more copies of them to awaken them after you've got them to their max star level. The whole point of collecting heroes is to build a team, and you have a team of six heroes that can fight against whatever opponents are available. Now, the main hero in your team that everybody has to use is Mysterious Girl. Mysterious Girl can use one of three different artifacts. You can use a katana, you can use a scythe, or you can use a gun. Now, depending where you position her, you will enhance your heroes differently. So if I use the katana, for example, she will boost the hero in the same column as her. If I use the scythe, she'll boost all the heroes in the front row if she's in the front row. And if I give her the rifle, let's pop her in the back row, she'll boost all heroes that are in the back row. So what artifacts you choose to give Maya will determine where you want to not only put her in your lineup, but also where you want to put the other heroes in your team so that they can best benefit. Now I'm going to be using the scythe in this team, and that's because the scythe allows her to combo with Valkyrie. In this game, there are different heroes that have different abilities, and there are a particular kind of S-tier hero which are able to do some combos. So if we look at Valkyrie's active skill, you'll see if the Mysterious Girl is equipped with the Unique Scythe, it will trigger the combo skill, and her combo skill will do 132% of physical damage to all enemies and increase the hit chance by 20%. So basically, it allows Valkyrie to do an awesome, awesome attack. Now, what this looks like in the actual fight is as follows. So let me throw this in and you'll see that because Valkyrie is going to use her active skill straight away, you'll hopefully watch her do her combo. And because we've given Maya the scythe, it's going to work. So let's see. So here's the combo mechanic. There's a different animation for every hero. And Valkyrie's just, yeah, just damn awesome. Like she's just absolutely wiped that out. And different heroes have different combos they can use with Maya. So when you're thinking of a team to build, what you want to do is try run as many combo heroes as possible that all require Maya to use the same weapon. For example, let me show you some of the heroes available in the game. So Valkyrie, who we've already covered, requires the unique scythe to be equipped to Maya, but Valkyrie isn't the only hero that requires the unique scythe. If we take a look at Justice Knight Agrea, for example, she also gets a benefit if we have Maya equipped with the unique scythe. It allows the combo skill to trigger on her too. And several different heroes in the game all are able to be comboed in different ways. Now, if you're not sure which heroes to use with which artifact, if you select skill and then click on the artifact, you'll see there's a list of heroes that all benefit from that particular artifact. So these five heroes here 
or benefit with Maya's equipped with the scythe. If we change to the gun, these five heroes can combo with Maya when she's using the blitz sniper. And finally, the hero katana will allow these five heroes to benefit as well. So depending on what heroes you get and what kind of team you want to build will depend on what artifact you want to use and eventually upgrade using the forge function on your Maya. So it's quite cool that there's different teams you can build and you can go for these different combos and you can only use one of each hero. And one of each hero means that you can't have just multiple teams of all the same hero. And actually, because there's only five heroes to each artifact, a good team actually uses all of those five heroes with Maya using that artifact. Seems like a good team in the long run to aim for, don't you think? But you might be asking the question now, what heroes should I build early on? Because obviously you're not going to have upgraded artifacts. You're not going to be able to combo like that. Well, some really good early heroes to get your hands on are first off Jocasta. She's pretty decent. She's what they call a guard hero, as you can see here. And guard heroes are usually quite good early on because they are good defensive heroes and they often have a lot of damage and are very difficult to kill. Another example of a powerful guard hero you might want to pick up early is someone called Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight, or Irene, again is a guard hero, as you can see here, and she is particularly powerful. She has the ability to silence opponents, which is a form of crowd control, which stops them from using their energy skills. So I really like this. I have to say, she's probably the best early hero for most players, because she deals not only a lot of damage, but that CC she can do, or crowd control, is phenomenally strong. So if you guys are wondering, what hero should I build first? Dragon Knight is often a good one to go for. Also, some heroes combo really well together. So one combo I wanted to talk about was with a hero called Phantom Blade. So Phantom Blade has the ability Flexible Combat, which means after allies release their normal attacks, there is an increased chance that she can trigger assist and deal a normal attack against the primary target of the attack. So what that basically means is she will attack again when someone attacks, or at least have a chance to. This combines really well with a hero called Storm Witch. Stormwitch has the ability called Chain Attack, which it gives her a chance to use her attack again after she's done her attack. So I hope you can see the combo here. You attack with Stormwitch, then hopefully Phantom Blade will attack. Then Stormwitch attacks again, and hopefully Phantom Blade will attack. And they'll keep on doing this on Stormwitch's turn, and you'll hopefully deal an awful lot of damage. So Mako Tono or Stormwitch is a great hero to pair with Phantom Blade. So that's one of the early combos we've thought of. There are lots of other heroes in the game, and it's often considered that in many of the game modes going forwards that you'll unlock in the challenge area are going to require a healer. So one game mode that really requires you to need a healer is Expedition. It's currently locked for me, but it's a game mode where you keep fighting enemies and the amount of damage your heroes have taken carries over. So you constantly need to be healing your heroes to get as far as you can in that game mode. So a healer is often important there. Some good healers I can recommend for you guys starting off are well there's gentle healer that you get for free but she's only an a tier hero if you're after an s tier hero that's a healer sakura dancer is a good suggestion so's ghost princess she also can heal and finally sophia or mental healing so those three healers are good s tier healers to get on your team now that we've talked about the different heroes available in the game and the fact that you'll probably need a healer at some point and it's good to combo heroes with Maya's artifact of choice and it's often a good idea as well to look at the synergies that heroes can do, one thing worth asking yourself now is do I spend money on this game? Is it worth it? Well, if you wanted to, guys, there are some good things you can pick up. First of all, there's the mall. Every day you can buy different things available in the mall. I will say that buying advanced recruit devices is just... It, it's pretty much compulsory. If they're available for diamonds in the store, you should be buying these every day because they're going to get you more heroes in the long run. I also would encourage you to purchase triangle crystals because they're needed to upgrade your hero's skills. Now, Stardust is something you get as you do more and more advanced recruitments. I think the best thing to spend your Stardust on is the advanced S gene box because this has a good chance of giving you a rare hero in the game. So every time you use 100 advanced recruit devices, you'll get your hands on 5,000 of this currency up here, Stardust, and you can cash it in for one of these boxes, which I'd encourage you to do. And there's also different things like yellow crystals, which you can get for completing events, which can be cashed in to get any of the heroes listed here. And there's also the arena store where you get this currency called honor for beating opponents in the arena. So let me quickly show you what the arena looks like. 
you can see different people in the game all here. Here we have Blackpink, for example, who's ranked number one on the server right now, and there are different people that we can go and fight. As you fight people, you move higher up the rankings, and you'll also get your hands on this currency called Honor, which, as I explained before, you can cash in the Honor store to get your hands on either advanced recruit devices or hero shards. But of course, I do think advanced recruit devices are the best thing to pick up here, because at the end of the day, they're going to help you complete events and they're going to get you copies of new heroes. So in the events menu, there are different things you can buy. As I said, diamonds are going to be pretty good for picking up resources, and the premium privilege card is a great way to cash in star dollars to get your hands on basically an amount of diamonds every single day. And also this lasts for the entire month, so you're going to get 980 diamonds straight away, and also 520 diamonds per day for 30 days. There's also the lesser privilege card, which will do a similar thing, getting you more diamonds. So if you were thinking about things to buy, just to get your diamonds rocking in, that's a great thing you can purchase. Also, every day for free, you get your hands on a star coupon, and there are different things available, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly, that you can pick up too. So every day for six of the star dollars, you can choose to buy two recruit devices and 100 diamonds, which I'm going to purchase now, and also weekly, you can cash in a similar thing, which gets you five advanced recruit devices and 600 diamonds, so you can pick that up as well if you're after some good value ways to get advanced recruitments. Now, you don't have to purchase all of this stuff. As I said, it's just completely optional if you want to get your hands on more recruit devices and more diamonds to help you push and get more hero shards quickly. But you don't have to get these hero genes quickly. You can just choose to grind it out in adventure and take your time. So don't feel obliged to spend, but it's definitely a good idea if you wanted to make progress quickly. Other things worth picking up are the secret treasury, which you can find in campaign. Every time you pass a different milestone, you'll get your hands on gems. If you go and purchase the advanced treasury down here, you'll get more gems every time. So these diamonds, or gems as I'm calling them, can be used to purchase stuff in the game, and you get more and more the further you pass in campaign. So potentially wait for this to accumulate a bit, and then buy it if you want to get a bunch of diamonds very, very quickly. There's also a game mode called Battlefield, which also has its own version of the Secret Treasury, which I would encourage you to purchase and pick up if you wanted to get your hands on more gems. So look, if I buy that now, I'm going to get all the gems I've managed to progress, and I can claim them. And look at that, I'm getting all these gems because I've managed to get up to level 200. And you face against different waves, and you'll eventually get shards for Maya copies. You'll get your hands on gold, and also force and triangles. So it's a great way of getting resources to help level up your heroes, and also get copies of Maya so you can use her gene copies to upgrade her to Silver Star and beyond. One additional thing worth mentioning is the target menu where you can get resources for doing different quests in the game. You can either do weekly missions which refresh every week and there's also daily missions which you can do to get your hands on resources. They'll also give you this currency called hunter badges which can be used to move up the hunter certificate menu and this will give you different and small amounts of resources. However, in the bottom corner underneath where I am right now, if I just hide myself, you'll see there's a thing called the hunter ID card which you can purchase for 68 star dollars and by purchasing it, you get your hands on all of these resources right here. These additional resources on the right hand side become available to you and you get basically S tier genes which can get you S tier heroes and you get diamonds as well. So if I claim all of this and whoa! Okay, so I managed to get myself a copy of Phantom Blade who I was literally just talking about and that was because I managed to get myself an advanced S tier gene box. So this gets you a top end S tier hero if you're lucky. So that's awesome. That's already been worth it for me. And I can also continue to claim in these to get my hands on further resources. One thing I wish there was was a claim all button, but you know, guys, such is life. You can slowly grind through it. <laughs> and there is a little bit of satisfaction from doing this. And as you slowly move up the hunter certificate, getting more and more of these medals, you'll get more and more rewards. Another thing you can do as well is a thing called rapid looting, which will get you two hours worth of resources straight away. So that includes XP. So if you're trying to level up quickly, that's something worth doing. And you can do this multiple times a day. So just make sure you're logging in a rapid looting because you get your hands on a lot of resources very quickly if you do that. I'd encourage you to do it when you hit a wall in campaign so that you can maximize the resources you get because there's no point rapid looting if you can make more progress in campaign. So just make sure you're grinding through the adventure mode, moving around and also sailing your ship around to go beat up some people. So for example, find where you want to go, cash it in, 
And it's a good idea to try get adjacent to multiple ships because it doesn't use as much fuel. And also if you find people on your server, this is going to give you nuclear batteries which you can cash in to get more fuel. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to do adventure and hopefully I've covered what different things you might want to pick up and purchase. And also as a new player, hopefully I've covered some of the different game modes available in the game. So to finish off guys, one final thing I wanted to show you before we go is how you evolve heroes. So here we have Jocasta. Now I can evolve my Jocasta by first off putting in copies of C tier heroes. I'm going to be using these gene things because they don't actually use a hero, they just act as a pseudo hero that can pretend to be used when you're evolving your hero. So that's got me to one copper star. Next thing I need to do is pop in four B tier heroes. I said C tier before, I meant B tier. And that's going to get our Jocasta up to two star copper. And now we need A tier heroes, so we're going to use this pseudo one here. And now I need to get another one. I'm going to use this copy of this hero here. And now I need two more A tier heroes. But we don't have any A tier heroes. So hopefully we can go and get some if I try summon some from recruiting. So you can use the recruiter function here to get more heroes using the advanced recruit devices, which we covered how to get a little earlier on. So if I try my luck here, hopefully I can get myself some pretty darn good heroes. Let's find out. Okay, I didn't manage to get an S tier hero, but we did get a bunch of A tier heroes, which we can now use to go upgrade Jocasta. So if I go and pick her up here, Hellsythe or Jocasta can now be evolved using the two A tier heroes we managed to grab. And I'm just going to go with these two, evolve. And as if by magic, guys, she is now five star copper. Because we managed to get her to the max star level in her current star tier, which is copper, I can now awaken her. And because we have a copy of Jocasta, it shouldn't be too difficult. So, cashing that in now, we've got her to silver. And now we need to use more A tier heroes to upgrade Jocasta as we go. This first one requires multiple copies of the same A tier, and then we need to use different copies of A tier heroes and progressively you'll get her up to the max in her silver stars, and then gold is the next step, which will acquire even more copies of Jocasta. I believe it's two to get to gold tier. So once you've maxed her silver stars, and then taken her to gold, and then maxed that up to a five star gold hero, you can then consider getting your hero to SS tier. However, how you get a hero to SS tier is something for a different video, not for our beginner's guide. So hopefully that covered the basics of Angel Legion for you and gave you a few ideas of how to either progress your team, what potential things you could purchase if you were thinking about spending, and also what areas of the game you need to focus on. Make sure you are completing your progression in campaign before you advance to the next chapter because getting that titanium is super important for upgrading your cabin. And also if you're curious about what a very very good early team is, what you want to do is find a guard hero such as Dragon Knight and also use them alongside Maya with potentially a combo hero. Storm, which is also good to use because she just gets those continuous attacks, as I mentioned. And also, you absolutely want a healer on your team, maybe even two. A lot of people don't like leveling up A tier heroes, but if Gentle Healer is the only hero you have two copies of, it might just be worth it to bump her up so that you have some healing on your team for the various game modes, because healing really does go a long way in this game. If you have any more questions, guys, drop them down in the comments section or join us on Discord. You can find a link in the description. And thank you so much for tuning in, guys. If you want to keep up to date with more Angel Legion content or even Idle Heroes content, if you play that game too, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to check out some more of my content, you can find it over here on the side of the screen. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great week and happy idling.